because the fluid levels have been decreasing over time, perhaps there hasn't been a problem for a number of years. And now just with this long wet season that we've had over the last year and the year before even was a, was a very wet autumn, you know, we, we, you might start to see some problems on a farm where there weren't before, just to keep that in mind. Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Legan and with liver fluke estimated to cost at least 90 million euro to the Irish industry through reduced production, Dr Natasha Munier from Animal Health Ireland joins us to discuss how to control it effectively and understand it better. Natasha, you're very welcome. We're hearing a lot from farmers and vets talking about liver fluke this year. Why is that? It's definitely a problem this year. It's time of year for it. It comes around every year. But essentially, um, we've had a particularly wet year this year. It's the ideal situation for liver fluke just because of the life cycle that they have. So they, their life cycle is indirect. It's a parasite that uh, needs a mud snail to complete its life cycle. And that, that mud snail enjoys wet, foggy ground, um, which, which half of Ireland tends to have, um, and particularly when we've had such a wet season. So that's why I imagine that this year we're, we're going to be seeing more problems than usual with liver fluke. And how high is the incidence of liver fluke this year, given the weather that you mentioned there over the past few months? So one of the what, what we do um, as part of the Beef Health Check program is we we monitor the, the the liver fluke levels at slaughter. One of the problems with that is we're seeing a delayed response. So we're only seeing the animals when they land up at slaughter, um, whereas the the problem is now months ago maybe where, where they picked the fluke up. But with those numbers that we've been comparing. This is the first time in in eight years that we've been recording this data that we've actually seen an increase on average for this year. So it's actually the the live fluke that we're seeing at slaughter has doubled this year. And now that sounds like a lot, but it's essentially going from about 1% of all the animals that are slaughtered to about 2% this year. But it 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 is an increase for the first time. And you mentioned there the Beef Health Check report. Can you talk through how farmers that have finished cattle on their farm, how they can access the Beef Health Check report for their farm? What other information that that would give them? So what the the Beef Health Check records, it it records uh, liver fluke, whether that's live actual parasites that are seen at slaughter or whether it's just liver fluke damage due to parasites and, and as well as pneumonia and liver abscesses. And so this is for any animals that have been finished in a number of factories that are participating across the country. Um, And all of this data is firstly, uh, it's usually given to the farmers with their remittance um, as as a form of a report, but all of the data that's been recorded for any animals that they've slaughtered in those participating plants are available on ICBF. Now you don't need to be a Herd Plus member to be, to access that data. It's available with with any of the standard logins. You just need to to register um, if you haven't already done so with ICBF. And under the the um, services screen, there's an Animal Health Island uh, tab, and under that you'll see the Beef Health Check is one of the the options there. And you can view all of the animals that have been finished at slaughter. Any of your animals will be available then on ICBF to view to have an idea of whether you have liver fluke on your farm or whether uh, or whether they've they've been clean, uh, all the animals that you've seen through. Most definitely. In fact, I know you mentioned it is a retrospective looking at the Beef Health Check report, but it's still important to review when cattle are finished, if the health plan that's currently on the farm, if that's working or if changes need to be made now for the next group of cattle that's been finished. Yeah, exactly. So, so like I say, it, you know, it, it is historical data. So you've already sent the animals. You can do nothing with those animals that have been sent. But it gives you an idea, firstly, do you have liver fluke on the farm? And secondly, you know, w- what did your treatments look like last year? If they're being sent to, to slaughter and they have live fluke um, that are being detected at slaughter, that makes me question maybe the timing of the treatments were not quite right. So maybe uh, the, the, the wrong kind of medicine was used at the wrong time, something like that, that maybe the treatments weren't effective. If you do see liver fluke damage, there's many farms in Ireland that you're never going to get rid of fluke entirely. And, and the liver fluke damage might mean that you had some liver fluke, but you treated it and it was probably appropriately treated. And now you, you still see the damage that those fluke cause, but they're not seeing the live parasites anymore. So that also gives you a little bit of information. And for farmers that aren't finishing stock in relation to faecal sampling, when should they be taken to get an accurate result? So with the the faecal sampling, what you're detecting then is the eggs that are being produced by the parasites. Now, the the liver fluke themselves, they take about 12 weeks after the time that the animal's been infected to the time that the, the parasites are mature and producing eggs. 
So if you if you fecal sampling too early and you're trying to detect fluke, um, you might not. It might be negative, and you go, well, I've got no fluke. But that's not necessarily true. It could just be too early in their life stage that they're not producing egg sets. So if you want to be sure, you, you have to be waiting till late after housing. So after Christmas, really January time, th then you're definitely going to be, be detecting eggs um, uh, for, for your animals if there's fluke on the farm. It also gives you an idea. Most most farmers are treating fairly early in the housing or mid-season housing treatment. If, you, if you're then testing later in that housing season, you can see whether those treatments were effective and if all the adults have been killed. And in relation to the treatments, Natasha, what should farmers be using to treat liver flu, given that the life cycle that you mentioned? So that life cycle is pretty long and there's, there's three types of treatments that are available on the market. You have um, a product, uh, the, the active ingredient is called triclobendazole. That one works for the immature uh, liver fluke and it's the only one that you can use from about two weeks after housing that will kill all life stages of the parasites. The problem with that specific medicine is that there is now resistance to it and, and so you just need, if you, if you suspect that might be a problem on your farm, chat to your vet, see what the alternatives are because then continuing to use that doesn't make any sense. But there are two other categories that you can use. Uh, there's one that work in, say, the mid the mid age of of the parasite, say six to eight weeks of uh, old uh, parasites, and then you have ones that work just on the adult parasites. So they they coming in at the 10 to 12 week mark is is when those start to be effective against those those liver fluke. Now, if you think while the animals are out grazing in the autumn season, that's the, when they're going to be picking up the infection. At the time of housing, they might have a range of ages of liver fluke parasites in their system. So you need to, to treat according to what you think you, if you're going to have. If you have a big problem uh, with, with fluke, you might need to treat earlier in the season and then repeat the treatment later. Um, Alternately, you, 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 you could wait a little while. If, if you don't expect a large number of parasites, you could wait eight weeks, 10 weeks, and use one of those products that are effective against the mature parasites, the adult, the adult side of, of the parasites. But chat to your vet about that. That's very farm-specific as to what works on your farm, um, as to what the best treatment is for your, for your animals. And particularly with the mild temperatures in early November, Natasha, some weanlands may have stayed out grazing longer or other cattle weren't housed until the last fortnight. As a result, is there an increased risk for liver fluke in those animals? So depending on which pastures that were, they, they were grazing in, so, so it tends to be, uh, fluke will be, the, the, the mud snail likes a, a, a wet environment. It tends to be those waterlogged, you know, heavy soils that they, they'll be found in. So if animals were grazing on those kind of soils, there is an increased risk. The longer they're grazing, uh, the more risk there is that they might have picked up an infection. Um, but it, it is just a case then of, you know, adjusting the treatments as needed uh, if, if, you know, it, depending on where they've been grazing and what the risk is. And rumen fluke is also something that's been talked about recently. How would farmers know if there was a rumen fluke issue on the farm? The rumen fluke is an interesting parasite. It, it, it's similar to liver fluke in that it also needs that same mud snail as part of its life cycle. It also takes about 10 to 12 weeks for, for the parasites to mature and start producing eggs. So if you send a sample away for a fecal egg count uh, for flukes, it might come back that it's liver fluke positive. And if that's the case, what you're seeing is the, these adults, rather than being in the liver, like liver, liver fluke, they're in the rumen, in the large stomach. Uh, that's where the adult parasites are and they produce their eggs from there. So if you're detecting the, the eggs on, on, on the fecal sample, um, you've got those adults in, 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 in your, your animals. But that's not necessarily a problem. Um, most animals do fairly all right with the adult fluke, so that by the time you're detecting it, you, you, it's, it's no longer a clinical problem on farm. What we do see, though, is for some farms where they might be grazing, particularly for younger animals, they're grazing those kind of waterlogged areas and they get a very heavy infection. And it's the juvenile stage of the fluke that causes most of the damage as it's migrating through the gut system. Um, that's when it causes a lot of problems. It tends to cause a scour, tends to, uh, a failure to thrive. You know, chat to your vet about that um, if, if that's what you suspect, because it can also look like other worm burdens, other like gut worm problems at that time of year, late autumn. So, so chat to your vet. Um, but that, that's, that's when there's a clinical problem and I suggest that maybe you, you need to be treating for it. 
And it's really important, Natasha, for farmers to be vigilant, especially if liver fluke or rumen fluke has never been an issue on the farm in the past. Yeah, indeed. Um, and, and what you might find is that we've, because the, 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 the fluke levels have been decreasing over time, perhaps there hasn't been a problem for a number of years. And now just with this long wet season that we've had over the last year and the year before even was a, was a very wet autumn, you know, we, we, you might start to see some problems on a farm where there weren't before. Um, so it's just, just to keep that in mind. And finally, Tasha, in these few weeks now, post housing, what do you advise from an animal health point of view? So one of the biggest problems as soon as animals land up in housing, particularly for young stock, is respiratory disease, pneumonias, coughing, uh, snotty noses and so on. Um, and, and hopefully if, if this has been a problem before, you've, you've got some kind of a vaccination plan and the animals are fully vaccinated by the time they come in. But one of the important things is just to check the air quality uh, that you have in the houses while the animals are all there now. You know, as you enter the house, if you're smelling a strong smell of ammonia, um, then then you you need to look at the movement of air, that fresh air is coming in, um, and to give them their best chance against, against getting respiratory diseases at this time. That's great, Natasha. Thanks very much. Thanks so much. That's all for this week's episode and you can catch up on all other shows and interviews on the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.